Hello guys, I am in my favorite library and I'm going to tell you more about alchemists on the second court. Some of them were truly alchemists and they did really strange things. Probably you already know about some uh, alchemists on uh, the of the second court. Did you hear about Edward Kelly or John Dee or Johannes Kepler? All these guys, they worked on a Court of Rudolf II in a Prague, and I'm going to tell you more about alchemy and alchemist on a uh, Court of Rudolf II. I made my research about uh, Rudolf II court, and you know what is interesting? Actually, I found in his inventory of the Cabinet of Curiosities uh, that he owned really strange things, and for example, bizarre, and bizarre it was powder, uh, what they used uh, as a snake bead antidote, strange. The thunderstone, they mean like a thunderstone. It's like a thunder broke some stone and they just saved this piece in a collection. Also strange. Okay, and also horn of unicorn, but basically it wasn't a unicorn, it was a kind of narwhal or something like this. Really strange, most mysterious uh, manuscript of the ever is a Rumi manuscript. It was uh, written by an uh, unknown language. And seriously, researchers, they still don't know what is kind of language it is. They tried to decode it, but unfortunately still is impossible. Uh, actually, Rudolf uh, II owned all these materials because in a, uh, on a Prague castle, uh, exactly you know, a uh, ground floor, it was an alchemy lab, actually. The root of the second, he also was a, a, an alchemist, and he made uh, his own experiments. We know that Rudolf the second supported uh, some alchemists, other John Dee, well, Edward Kelly, Michael Meyer, Oswald Kroll, and of course, the really unknown but a really important alchemist, the creator of the Philosopher's Stone, is the Polish alchemist, is Michael Sandivogus. So, either Rudolf II, he supported some uh, um, the alchemist on this court, because of him in the 16th century, it was a part of natural science and it had a really important occult and a philosophical dimension. The occult dimension it represents working with the materia prima. The materia prima is one of uh, like a divine materia and it links uh, really with the natural magic because it represents like a four basic elements. Also, for the alchemy, it was a really important uh, experiment. The main statement it was uh, the Opus Magnum, what is like a great work, and great work is exactly the process of the creating of the uh, Philosopher's Stone. Oh, guys, the Philosopher's Stone is like uh, some, something what will be able to uh, transmutate this some uh, basic metal to the to the gold. You can understand that uh, the philosopher's mom they uh, also uh, wanted to use uh, uh, the panacea and uh, uh, they also was uh, the, the some uh, you know the immortal life uh, etc. Some uh, documents and uh, preserve uh, some uh, reports of the um, alchemy experiments uh, on a, uh, the the court lab. Thanks to them, we know that Rudolf II he also tried to make some own experiments, and uh, he was uh, good with one tincture. So what is the tincture? Um, who knows? They just uh, um, subscribe it as a gray, in that it costed around uh, forty thousand of denarius. Then another uh, report says that Edward Kelly was uh, really good in the uh, creation of Mercurium Solis. So, what is a Mercurium Solis and how did he create it? The Edward Kelly took a ball with an eight uh, pound gold and made a hole in the center 
after that he put some uh, white powder inside this hole and uh, he covered everything locked this hole by wax after he put everything in a bowl and uh, poured brandy over and then Mercurium Solis is prepared so the Paracels he suggested to use this Mercurium Solis at the Panacea is like uh, against of all uh, illnesses that was a mercury chlorine guys it was a calomel they believed that it works as a sedative but uh, actually it uh, was really really unhealthy and uh, it was a poison unfortunately uh, they used it uh, till the 19th century yes edward kelly was a really amazing person and uh, I'm going to make another video about him, maybe about his biography. Please write a uh, comment if you would like to know about him more and about his work with the Chanzi. On the Rudolf score uh, uh, were many alchemists, but the second one, really important, it was exactly uh, the Michael Sendivogis, the Polish alchemist who probably created the Philosopher's Stone. At least he wrote 12 books about it, how to create a philosopher's stone. All uh, alchemists and uh, everybody wrote that he really did it. But you know, the perception of the 16th century is a totally different, and they just call it is uh, probably in a different way. So, what he is exactly created as a philosopher's stone is a question, but we know that he also discovered oxygen, guys. He discovered oxygen and he called it a uh, light tincture and he was right guys. I think at least Michael Sandivogius he uh, was able to proclaim that he is a really alchemist, isn't it?